Hey everyone, welcome to What the Puck. I am Chanel Berlin and we're talking about NHL free agency. Um, we're going to talk now about what I think are the worst three signings in the NHL thus far. We're into the third day of free agency, but these already, I think, hit records for what are you doing. So third worst, start you know with the not too bad. I'm going to go with the San Jose Sharks. I'll be totally honest with you, I think probably Calgary signing Derek Angelin to almost $9 million for three years is probably worse than this, but the Sharks are a contender. They have taken the Kings to seven games the past two postseasons, very close to having a great run, and for whatever reason, they're signing people like John Scott for one year for $700K. Um, they re-signed Mike Brown two years. He was a free agent, but you know they, they got this done right before free agency started, signed him for two years, 2.4, and then they got Ty McGinn, his rights from Philadelphia and signed him for 600k basically guaranteeing that they have a terrible fourth line against like the Ducks and the Kings who have great fourth lines. The Kings had Mike Richards on their fourth line this past postseason. He's a second liner. He's making second line money, but they had him on the fourth line. You know who's not going to do anything to stop Mike Richards? John Scott. Nobody is going to be affected by this guy. The most he did to scare anybody was Phil Kessel in the preseason for 2013-14. He threatened to fight him. Phil Kessel took a stick to John Scott's leg. Not everybody's going to react like that, especially if you bring in somebody like John Scott to stop, say, Dustin Brown, who is extremely durable no matter what you do. It can still score points, and John Scott can't. He's also not going to be at the ice on the ice at the same time as any of San Jose's big like guys who put points up, he's not going to be on the ice with Tomas Hurdle. So what's the point of getting him? It's stupid, and it it really frustrates me to see a good team basically actively wreck a lineup. And I think they're sort of trending in that direction. So I hate that. Um, second for me, Florida Panthers. Dave Boland is probably the most overhyped player for the last couple seasons, largely because he scored the game-winning goal, the Stanley Cup-winning goal in Game 6 in the Chicago Bruins series um, in the shortened season. So now Florida has signed him for five years, $27.5 million. At best, Dave Bolin is going to be a third liner. He's not a top six guy, and now he's making top six money. Even if he manages to produce this next season, and again, he's coming off an ankle injury that he sustained while in Toronto. So even if he comes off um, or comes back from that and puts up any points, it's not going to be what you need him to be. He's not going to be like a Jeff Carter person. So I think you're setting him up to fail. He's not going to be Patrick Kane, who plays on Chicago's second line. It's, it's a bad signing. They've also signed a couple veterans and Sean Thornton, who is an enforcer and doesn't have a whole lot of skill. And I thought it was great that Boston let him go. And Willie Mitchell, who's coming from the Kings, who's a great possession player and a pretty good passer, but is 37, and they're paying him $8.5 million for two years. That's too much. So I think those two signings Florida can get away with because it's only for two years. They're not quite a contender yet, but they've got some nice pieces. I think the Dave Bolin contract has potential to handcuff them in a, like three years when they're ready to really start competing. And I think that was just a bad move by Dale Talon down, down in Florida. I give them a little bit of leeway because they're a team that was trying to make the cap floor, which is $51 million. With that Dave Boland deal, they're now at about $54 million um, in signed, you know, taking cap space. So a little leeway there, but it's still bad. I don't like it. But that's why they're not number one. And that's why the Washington Capitals are the number one worst signings of the NHL free agency right now. Matt Niskanen, everybody knew no matter where he was going, he was getting overpaid. He had a career year in Pittsburgh. They weren't going to bring him back. But anybody else who wanted to sign him, they had to pay him some big money. So Washington pays him $40.25 million over seven years, which is the longest term you can sign for a free agent. And Niskanen, that's great for him because he doesn't know what his production is going to be from here on out. So he's like, let me cash in right now. The Capitals, yeah, Niskanen makes their defense better, but you can't guarantee that he's going to be good for seven years and not for that money. Um, but worse than that, the absolute worst contract that I think has been signed so far in free agency is Brooks Orpic. That is a steaming pile. I don't know why you would sign this guy. He's in his 30s. He's slow. He had You could just tell watching him on the ice. His reads were worse. His confidence is not there anymore. He's only going to get older and look slower and slower in a league that gets faster every year. I don't know why you pay him that money. He's making Dave Bolin money, and I think Dave and Dave Bolin, like they play different positions, but even Dave Bolin is a better signing at that price than Brooks Orpic. And 
even though they do make the Capitals better and you've got Barry Trotz who's come in now as a new head coach and he's a defensive coach, he can work some magic there, but he's not working that kind of magic with Brooks Orpik, not with that guy. And it's really weird, especially because they just had, or they're in that last year of the Mike Green contract with the Capitals. They've been waiting to sort of get out from under that and now they're stuck under this new contract. It makes no sense. I don't know what GM Brian uh, McClellan is doing down there with that. Even in his presser, he started by coming up to the podium and saying, all right, everybody be nice, be nice. No, that's bad. You know it's bad, we know it's bad. I don't see it really panning out for the team and that's why I think it is the worst signing of NHL free agency thus far. Uh, thanks for watching and let me know what you think. Those are my opinions. Let me know if you think there are worse signings. Um, follow me on ThanksBud where I mostly talk about Kings hockey or you can follow me individually. Um, Chanel, it's at Chanel Berlin on Twitter. And uh, yeah, until next time.